Hello everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. So day 13 of our 14 days of passive income. Yes, I can't believe that we're already uh, almost at the end. <laughs> Two weeks, time flies, especially yes. when I did my 40 days of positivity, that remember? That was a bit long. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like, I'm going to do 60 days of passive income. Anyway. Yeah, I talked him down to 14, so that's good, because I think that it would have been hard to find 60 days of passive income ideas. Yeah, a little but too we much. Still came, we still had to regroup a few things to, to cut it down to 14 so that's good <laughs> exactly so day 13 we want to talk about writing an ebook so this one can seem quite daunting but it can actually be easy as well so if you keep it simple uh, we really believe in less is more we uh, both studied interior design and mm -hmm. yeah we're wearing a lot of patterns but anyway less <laughs> is more <laughs> so sometimes doing less um, I also follow this um, author I forget his name but it's the um, the book of essentialism and the guy says the, to do less but better so I think doing less but better is important so writing an ebook can be just that mm -hmm. well, I think that oftentimes people are already sharing their passions sharing ideas with, with family and friends but why not put it in in writing and share it with people other people who want to hear the ideas and it is a little bit of work at the beginning but then you kind of reap the benefits afterwards yes and a lot, then a lot, like a lot of the other ideas that we mentioned in the last uh, yeah you do the days. work first and then then the the action comes after so why not extract the audio so take mm -hmm. the audio and turn it into an ebook so this series that we've done right now why not turn it into an ebook about passive income so that would be fun and that's a super <laughs> lazy way of doing it Oh, there's Sarah Larby. Hello. So, Sarah, if you yes. want to write an ebook, <laughs> I'm sure that she's already doing tons yeah, of interesting things. Yeah, I don't think things. she needs an ebook. <laughs> but in case you're bored, you know, at the cottage, I'm sure you're not. But okay, first time this happened before the phone ringing. We've got a call ringing. while our live was on. <laughs> yes. So, anyway, uh, yeah, you can write an ebook using the audio and files, like even podcasts or different. Yeah, and it things. doesn't have to be something that's super long. I mean, a lot of the e books that we've seen, like even for real estate investing, it's often just uh, like a few a, pages, an idea, a few pages, 10, 20 pages, where people kind of uh, wet their whistle, I guess is what you'd say, and then they want to talk to you more about what you're, what you're doing. It doesn't have to be real estate investing. It can be tons of other things. Exactly, and then you build from there. So that's where yesterday we had a membership. Uh, a website with a membership so you attract them with an ebook uh, you can sell ebooks so if you've got something really hot like how to I think I'm gonna write an ebook on being a lazy landlord but not a slumlord just being lazy, <laughs> a lazy, lazy by, yeah a lazy landlord with success like not being a slumlord but being um, proactive and delegating and I think that would attract a lot of people well, it would definitely be for an interesting subject, a lazy yeah. landlord. <laughs> yeah, you need to. But a, a good, a good lazy landlord that the tenants like. So there you go. That's a, a good topic. There anyway, you go. mm -hmm. so passive income ideas. We just wanted to stimulate your uh, your creative juices and see if you can get something done. Yeah. And so like I said, less is more. So tomorrow's the last day, day fourteen, and I think it's one of the ones that I prefer the most. So we're not gonna give it away right now because then it'll be giving away the. Oh, and I think a we're going to have a guest. Sarah's coming on. Yay. <laughs> I don't know if it was planned, but hello. So, yeah, Hey, you how are you? Good, good of you. <laughs> good, good. It's, uh, it's exciting to see you guys. I, we just finished uh, a meeting with the Right Club, and then I tuned into your passive investing, which is, which is awesome. So you, you guys are doing a bunch of days on passive investing? Yes. Yeah, exactly. We, we're actually almost at the end. We're on day 13 of 14, but... Uh, yeah, we wanted to help people build passive income because we work with a few investors and their streams of revenue have been affected. Uh, one of them is uh, owns a restaurant, so as well, you I think can imagine... A lot of people are looking for other ways to make money now with COVID. I mean, you can't yeah. always rely on your 9-to-5 job. No. Like, you know, you don't have the 9-to-5 yeah, anymore, it's all gone. Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone now. You got to rely on different sources of income. And it's it's not actually just real estate investing, right? I mean, it, no. like you you had the perfect idea of like thinking of an ebook or different ways that you can you can monetize. Um, it could I mean, it could be courses, it could be nothing to do with real estate. But it is, you know, like they say, the average what the average millionaire has five or more passive or sources of income in general. Um, and it's and it's awesome to see you guys. Uh, 
you know, sharing all that content. That's amazing. Oh, cool, thank, thank you. So you. Yeah, that was a nice surprise. Yes. <laughs> Tomorrow, our favorite topic we're going to say is um, being generous. So that's a source of passive income in a way. Yeah. It's kind of unusual, but anyway, I'm going to develop on that one is being generous. It's crazy when you sow in other people's lives. Uh, we're Christian, but even as non-Christians or whatever you believe in, uh, when you help others, it's crazy what you get back. And it's yeah. kind of a passive income and it's not taxable. <laughs> That's the so, best part. <laughs> so can I, can I ask like what your favorite, like maybe your top three favorite sources of passive income for you guys are? Uh, well, I love the idea of affiliate programs. Yeah, that's true. That's so we mentioned one. it. Uh, that's a good one. And in any subject, I mean, you could be doing uh, nails or uh, eyelashes or something. <laughs> and then you could have affiliates. That's funny you. that you would think of nails and eyelashes. Well, <laughs> or shampoo. We have a friend who sells this so crazy shampoo. shampoo. You want to grow, regrow hair anyway, it's crazy. I'm not going <laughs> to fit through a door very soon with the shampoo. <laughs> yeah, and I think also leveraging, like that's one of the ones that we talked about quite a bit, lever leveraging locks or HELOCs in ways that where you, where you can invest. It doesn't have to be in real estate. I mean, obviously that's our favorite, yes. but it can be yeah. in other things that are producing income. So why not leverage money that you don't have? Yes, that's the best OPM fully. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what, what else was on our list. Um, our, our cat is uh, meowing. I don't know if you guys can hear him. <laughs> oh, the coursepreneur and crypt crypto hacking. So I know a lot of people cra are going crazy with Bitcoins and mm -hmm. stuff. But our son actually on day, this was day five, I think. Yes. He told us about Bitcoin. I'm like, let's buy a cheap property, fill it with computers and just mine for Bitcoins. <laughs> and he said we, he devised a plan where you could earn $200,000 a day. So I'm like, well, that's a bit, yeah, that's a a bit lofty, extreme. but anyway, <laughs> what, what about you guys? Like just watching, watching this, the, the folks that joined, what's your favorite source of passive income? Just type that in and share that with us. I, you know, I, obviously my favorite source of passive income is real estate investing. Um, you know, I, I, I think I, I'm leaning towards my favorite favorite. I know this is not super passive, but it's like that medium term type of rental. I, yes. you know, I think that like that is a underserved market. It's a gold mine. I've got like, so like my two uh, Burlington units, for example, um, you know, each unit is averaging three grand a month on people that are staying one to three months. And like, if I were to rent it on its own, the basement would probably get 1700 instead of 3000, you know, the nice. top might get 22, 23. Um, all right, so we've got stocks, we've got real yes. estate all the way, just some comments that I'm seeing there, favorite passive income. Um, all right, let's see what else. What else do you guys do for, for passive income? I mean, real estate is definitely the best, in my mm -hmm. opinion. House hacking <laughs> is a good one. Yeah. So renting, even not just a room in your house, but we were telling people about your garage, your driveway, your shed, your basement. You can rent out anything. It's crazy. The tools. So if you, uh, my mother's boyfriend is really big on tools and power equipment. You can rent it out. There's, I think it's Ruckify, I yeah. think it's called, and you can rent it out. And That's so awesome that you're doing those, those um, rentals that are making more money than if you would have just, just been renting them out. To... Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, it's fun because it's like not as hands-on as Airbnb like granted it's not as passive as like just putting a long-term tenant there but the cash flow makes it totally worth it so they're there for a month or three and then you clean it in between or whatnot and yeah you've got to furnish it but you know i, I think i'm going to do more of those all day long uh you know with the, the land development stuff that i'm doing but it's uh it's just a, a great way to, to to boost the cash flow to uh you know be a little bit more passive um you know other than that, I mean, obviously there's stocks. I know you guys mentioned stocks. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not like that well versed in it, so I won't pretend I am. <laughs> yield <laughs> nodes, I don't know what yield nodes is, but somebody mentioned yieldnodes.com. Um, oh. That would be interesting. I don't know. Be yield, oh, yieldnodes.com. So it's probably the yield on stocks. And I see mm -hmm. Mike and Leanne. Mike actually does some financial planning, I think, on the side. And he said that's like residual income. So if you do a little bit of financial planning, people then you keep getting some residual income uh, royalties things like that so 
Yeah, that's going to be your next one, Sarah. Royalties. Yeah, <laughs> no, I've I've got to get that book. You know, you know, one of the thing actually, Francois is, is going to be helping me with this, but it's going to be a YouTube channel or something along those lines that is going to be a mix of my podcasts, but with like going out in the field and seeing, you know, projects from start to finish from other investors. Like, I think that there's definitely a need from, you know, looking at the HDTV stuff that's like pretty fake in my opinion. Real stuff, really yeah. Real stuff, but like the stuff that's not just like in one episode on like an actual construction and then you're done, right? But like what no. happens before, <laughs> like finding the properties, working with different, different, you know, uh, power team members, your your lawyer, your your broker, like all the stuff that they do in the back end. Like I think that there's a need to show like the life of an investor from start to finish versus like let's just build a house and like make it pretty and flip <laughs> it and like you know the HD so like I really want to do something that's a mix of HDTV stuff, you know, that's like fun to watch, but like make it more realistic and like podcast related where like the, the investors are sharing some of their um, you know, their insights and that's that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I, I think I think it'd be fun. I don't know what you guys think. Do you think it would yeah. be a, a good option to have a, a mix of HDTV slash podcast um, mixed together on a on a show? <laughs> I think it's a great idea. I think that people will find it relatable. And I think it's great that you have that added value where they'll actually be also getting advice. Yes. And you can drink wine while doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you have to get the whole wine option in there yes, for sure. You need to have wine at all times. <laughs> I know, wine. I know. It's so bad, right? Hey, Kelly. Yes. <laughs> Kelly Kelly did an amazing deal in Ottawa. Congrats, Kelly. Oh, in Ottawa, cool. cool. That's Actually, great. you guys are both in Ottawa. Kelly, you yeah. should connect with Francois uh, regarding Ottawa. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's we're... hard to, to be getting deals, but they're still, they're still doable. We're looking at a flip. We tried on two other flips last week. It didn't pan out, no. but... Uh, I mean, just across the street from us, there was a house and we almost flipped it. We would yes. have made 100000 in one summer, just changing carpets and painting. <laughs> so it's just seized Crazy, the, right? the opportunity. So yeah, Kelly, we'd love to hear from you. And yeah, yeah that's connect. awesome. Uh, the Right Club with Sarah. We have an Ottawa, well, Eastern Ontario, Western Quebec event every month. So yeah, I think, I think Kelly, Kelly comes to our Right Club event, so she, I, I believe she's on that. But I think it would be good, actually, because you have some connections in Kingston. Maybe Kelly, reach out to Francois and, and, uh, and see what kind of connections uh, you guys can share. Um, all right, we've got Katz Orly. Can you tell us about your cottage? Mm. Um, I guess in, in terms of the passive income piece. I, so here's, here's the thing with the cottage, and I mean, I do this every year. I, I pick and choose the weeks and the days before I release them to the public. I'll tell you my whole summer right now, other than the dates I picked is jam packed. Like I don't have, nice. you know, anything until, until September, mid September, but oh. I, I am planning on living there in May and June and like, <laughs> you know, a part of July and a part of August. So I've released everything else and, it, and it's like, it's booked right away, but I'll tell you, you know, it's like one of those things I, I get, you know, high season where we're getting 600 bucks a night. Uh, high season so like we could make more money if we wanted to like spend less time there and rent it out more um, but it is a great way to make some really good cash flow like if you're looking at it as like just a pure investment standpoint here's the mm -hmm. thing if you take july and august you've got eight or nine weeks there times i mean i bought this cottage for under 500 grand um, it's probably worth about six, six, uh, sorry, eight sixty now, but you take that 600 and you multiply it by, let's call it 60 days. You know, that that's what you're making in July and August. You're probably covering the majority of your costs right then and there. And then you've got, you know, usually two weeks in March, you've got like April around like Easter, it'll get rented. Like you'll, you'll likely, you'll likely make your money, um, you know, break even money in, in the summer, July and August, and everything else is going to be pure, pure cash flow. So you can rent it out during Christmas wow. and New Year's and March break and May 2 4 and Labor Day. It's, oh, uh, cool. it is pretty, pretty good. And there's That's some great. cottages where, uh, like our cottage, uh, during winter, you could store like your boat or something. Like ours, ours is seasonal, so winter it's shut down, but you could store your boat. So another source of passive income. That's true. You can, if, you have a big, <laughs> if you have a big lot, you can do storage, you can do different things. And then just how it's managed. Yeah. I manage it from a distance. So here's what I have with the cottage. I don't know if you guys have, because I know, Francois, you have, you know, a place as well that you, you rented out in the summer. Um, mm -hmm. But in, in terms of like trying to make it as passive as possible, so I have like a smart thermostat so that I can control the, the temperature if no one's there, I can like bring it down 
pretty much, uh, you know, without freezing the pipes and that kind of stuff. I have an alarm system that I can actually arm and disarm remotely. I've got a uh, door code. So I just give the code to the um, renters when they come in, but I can actually unlock and lock the door. So if I have like trades coming in, for whatever reason, I can unlock it from a distance and then I have a camera. Um, and then I have a couple local cleaners that I found um, and they, they have uh, a storage space where I just like lock it up and then I put like all the toilet paper and hand paper, like whatever stuff. And then like once in a while when I go up for myself, I'll go, I'll go take a look or they'll let me know what's low. But essentially they take what they need from there and then they, they clean in between and, you know, yeah, things have happened. Like we've had the furnace go at some at one point when there were renters uh -oh. there. But like, you call you call the furnace. Right? Like I'm not gonna go fix the furnace myself. I wouldn't even know what to do. So <laughs> you, you just, <laughs> it, it's just like a property manager. That's what they're doing. Is they're fielding calls, right? If you have good tenants, they're fielding calls. They're calling their plumber, their electrician. They're you know. All, so then you can do the same thing. Um, and then and then in terms of like you know your guests. I mean, really, ultimately, you know, you check. Uh, you, you give them the code and, and the, the information and you have a little booklet uh, there that they can read about how the house works. If they have any questions, they'll let you know. And then you kind of just check in on them after the first day. And, and that's usually all I hear uh, from them. And then I'll just send them an automatic message afterwards saying, check out at 11. Thanks so much. You know, we hope to have you back. And that, that's essentially pretty much it. Nice. But that's you know, great. you can, you can manage. So I don't know how you guys, you guys are doing. I mean, you have quite a bit of properties uh, in New Brunswick um, yeah. And I know, you know, it's, it's further. Um, how did you go around managing that or um, the one that you had as well that you bought for your cottage rental? Yeah, all yeah. properties, even here in Ottawa, we do kind of like what you said, we field calls. And of course, New Brunswick, we have a property management because, I mean, we can't even go there physically right now. Yeah. So uh yeah so that's it it's building it's pretty, calls it's pretty efficient like you said like i mean once you have everything in place like you said the alarm the the block block box and everything system, else the mood to call it, it pretty well hours. runs itself and you just like you said field the calls <laughs> yeah yes. filter it's yeah i mean it's uh, real estate investing once you have a good tenant once you've done your screening and that's something you talk a lot about sarah once you have the right tenant it's every few months we get a call that's about it some yeah i don't know the furnace the uh, filter needs to be changed or something and here and you go if you have good <laughs> systems in place it, it can be pretty passive so yeah absolutely good systems and good tenants and you know just looking back and like looking back at the last seven years so that the majority of my calls were about an appliance oh, <laughs> yeah, about of course. plumbing water. or water issue or um, the furnace or maybe the water tank like went a couple times and that's but but the majority of it is going to be plumbing something's leaking somewhere um, <laughs> <laughs> or or just like I mean or maybe like just the odd repair or whatnot but like there's not even like just managing the whole portfolio like maybe I'll, I'll have like one problem a month which isn't wow. usually just me messaging someone, hey, go to this property and just send me the invoice. So like you have a team that's good that you trust. They're not going to screw you over. I think that's just like getting it set up. It takes a while in the beginning. The power team, yeah. yeah, it's tough. Once you have the right people in place, like you said, it's super easy. It's just getting those people in place that sometimes takes a little bit of time. Like in Cornwall, we have a few properties there and we found the right plumbers and they're just amazing. Um, I needed for insurance for them to go in and take a look at galvanized, if there was any galvanized plumbing, galvanized steel, I think. And the plumber went in and then I asked him, where's your invoice? He's like, no, we do this for free. I'm like, free? What? <laughs> He's like, yeah, we do this for our good clients. We go in and inspect and it's a crawl space. So it's not nowhere fun, but anyway. <laughs> so we have another question go. here. Is it, it, is it easy to manage rentals if I live in Vancouver and invest in Ontario? It can be like Sarah, if you do it right, it can be, but mm -hmm. it can also be difficult. So, I mean, I mean, there is, there is a, I mean, it depends where in Ontario, like if you have a good system in place and you have a good team, you could probably like Francois says, manage it yourself. However, you know, there's also good property managers, like complete yeah. properties, like she's in Niagara. Like I would, if I was in Vancouver, I'd probably just have her you know, get it at least set up, right? Because they do like tenant screening and finding and placing. Like that's mm -hmm. worth, you know, you know all of that. And for insurance to some insurance, do mm -hmm. ask that you have property management when you're that far. Like us for 
New Brunswick, they insisted you have to have property management. So, yeah. I mean, you know what? It's at, at some point, though, I will say, if we do this right, we will all want property management in the future yeah. because we're going to be gone half the year. We won't even want to have any of these calls, even You're if it's a once a month. <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> Yeah, so the right club in Curacao that's coming up soon. And I know, I know. We got to look more into Curacao. There's, yeah, there's... absolutely. Oh, oh, looks like it cut out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yes, yeah, you're you back. Kind of cut out a little bit. Now you're back. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Awesome. Well, you know, thanks uh, Thanks for letting me hop on. And, yeah, thanks uh, for hopping I, on. I guess uh, <laughs> going in on uh, your little passive income, I'll let you guys continue. But uh, great job and, and uh, keep it up. Keep up the great work. Keep in giving the insights to, uh, to all of us and, uh, you know, spreading positivity out there. So you guys are Thank awesome. You. Yes, We're back thanks, on Sarah. at 7 p.m. for wine and real estate. Little plug, I have to do it. But <laughs> we're going to feature one of our uh, investor friends. And yeah. she grew up in wine, wine country in D.C. So anyway, it's going to be uh, It's going to be interesting, yes. Yeah. Thank you so All much right. for hopping on with Thank us, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Let's tune in for that, guys. See you later. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.